stuff, so that means two more horror titles. Last week we took a break from some of the serious stuff for some more lighthearted fun, but this week I'm going to get back to some of the seriously creepy. And when it comes to animation, nobody does creepy better than Japan. So this week I'm going to take a look at a short OVA title, and I'm also going to talk a little bit about the manga that it was based on. This week's title is... The Bride of Demos. So, Bride of Demos is a pretty heavy story about a cast down Greek god, Demos and his pursuit of a high school girl, Minako. Demos wants to seduce her so that he can use her body to resurrect his deceased lover, similarly to the premise of The Mummy. <laughs> Unsimilar is the fact that his lover was his sister, hence why he got kicked out of Olympus in the first place. Now that's a pretty good, creepy sort of a premise to begin with. There's lots of stuff to work with there. But the series is actually less about Demos and Minako and more a collection of short, creepy horror stories that Minako stumbles upon or that the evil Demos causes. But either way, the stories are all pretty self-standing and all pretty creepy. This particular animated adaptation shows the viewer one such story from the series, and it's a creepy murder mystery of sorts. Demos' presence in the anime doesn't really make a lot of sense if you are not familiar with the manga already, and hence why I am going to be talking about both in the same breath. The artwork, both in the manga and the anime, is beautiful. I have to say I'm something of a sucker for shoujo artwork. It's kind of what drew me to anime in the first place. I will say the art here is pretty dated, but that is to be expected. What they manage to do very well with this style is convey excellent mood and atmosphere. The tone is set pretty early on and there's a great general sense of foreboding throughout the whole. What I would have liked from the anime version is maybe having adapted the first bit instead of the chunk from the middle, because as it is, if you hadn't read the manga first, you would have no idea who Minako or Deimos was or why they were important to the story. So I do recommend reading the manga. It's a hauntingly beautiful series of comics and it's also hauntingly dark and unsettling. The seduction and resistance between the two main characters is built up slowly over the course of the manga and you don't really get that at all from the anime. I've always really liked the idea of horror as romance the fear of seduction and attraction, and how the protagonist deals with conflicting desires. If it's done well, this can be really terrifying. And hence my love of titles like Dracula and Phantom of the Opera. This title does it pretty darn well, while also including a host of other supernatural themes and ideas as each short story unfolds. It's a fascinating world and setting with lots of creepy, surreal, and bizarre. So if you are into horror short stories or classic shoujo, this is a great title and one well worth looking into. I always love being able to talk about something a little bit more obscure, as you know, so I was really happy to stumble across this series. I do wish that they would make a new anime to go with it, but the one that they've got is pretty solid and the manga is more than gold. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe you'll give this title a peek. If you enjoyed this review, please do like, comment, and subscribe. I'll have one last horror title next week to wrap up October, so I hope you come back for that. I'll see you then!